big shout out for GJs because I think they are on the up and I think they're planning to do some really interesting and positive things and I think we should all get down and support them. Uh, so what made you want to get into this career? Is it something you always wanted to do? I think uh, teaching is something I find a very noble uh, vocation. It perhaps wasn't my uh, first choice of vocation, because I was always interested in music, but with, uh, without a musical air and the inability to play in a musical instrument, I don't think I stood much of a chance. Oh, so you were interested in the instrument? Like the um, vocal side. Well, I was interested in all of it, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> but uh, teaching was something I felt was quite, quite down my street, so to speak. Really. Okay. It, it involves sharing, and I quite like sharing. Alright. Um, what have you like watched sort of streaming or anything like that? Have you faced like you know throughout your career so far, mm -hmm. or still facing? There have been a range of struggles. I think one can initially identify with the black struggle because living in the, it's probably incorrect to say, but it's a white-led world. Non-white folks tend to find themselves in a very difficult place when it comes to making progress because uh, clearly white folks feel threatened uh, when they see other folks uh, trying to get their equal share of what's that nature has provided for all of us. And so there was the black struggle. And then of course there is the other struggle, which is the struggle within the black race, which is how do we identify ourselves in terms of who we are? And then once we identify ourselves, what are we going to do in terms of making who we are matters and set a precedent that our younger generation can feel proud of and want to emulate and excel when they grow up. So there's, there's been that struggle. And of course there's perhaps the greatest struggle, which is the individual struggle, where you struggle to identify who, who you are and where you stand in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> so you know, there's been all those struggles. Okay. In terms of the struggle of the black, the black individual, that's ongoing because the world hasn't changed in terms of who is supposed to be leading it. In terms of the struggle within the black race, that again is ongoing, because depending on whether you live in America, in, the, in Europe, or on the continent of Africa, there's that ongoing struggle as to when is it that we are going to rule ourselves effectively in a way that makes us feel proud of who we are, and the fact that we can have leaders who are not, they are say, corrupt, inept, who suffer from nepotism, but leaders who say, I'm here to serve the people, regardless of who they are and what they stand for in terms of their gender, in terms of their sexuality, etc. So that struggle is an ongoing struggle, and I think, I think it's going to take a few decades, perhaps centuries, before we resolve that. In terms of my own personal struggle, I suspect at some point I will come to a place where I say, you know, I struggled long enough, I'm just going to accept the way I know what I am and what it is I turn about. And I hope that happens before the last breath leaves my body. <laughs> okay, uh, so when do you see yourself in five, ten years? Uh, do you see yourself being a lecturer or teaching? Or do you see yourself doing something else? I would like to think that I'm on the latter part of my life as a formal lecturer in terms of standing in front of students and delivering lectures tutors and laboratory work. But I think one always teaches, you know, if you've got something to say and you feel you can share that 
with someone you think will benefit from it. And in that sense, I think I'll always be a teacher, a lecturer. In terms of what I'd like to do, I think I'd like to catch up on that long last ambition, which I never <laughs> quite realised, of music. Yes. And I'd like to think that I could perhaps pass some of my uh, spare time learning an instrument and probably writing songs. Perhaps it won't be to realise wealth, but just a self-satisfaction. Yes, okay. Uh, so, what advice would you give to people like me and others in the community Well, you know, the world is a great big opportunity. And the world presents itself in a way that those who are prepared to put themselves out there and compete are set to gain great rewards, either personal rewards in terms of self-development, self-fulfillment, or financial reward in terms of assets, or rewards in the form of how can I move a set of people from one place in their mindset to another place which is beneficial to all. And I think my advice to young people is not to be afraid, not to be shy, not to be uh, feel downtrodden, but to be brave and to look up and outwards and take on some of these challenges because, you know, life is a bit of an opportunity. And I've got to be honest with you, life promises us nothing. It doesn't make anyone any great promises, it doesn't grant us any favours, but what it does do is make itself open to those who are prepared to take it on and bring about great changes. And if you're not clear on what I'm saying, speak to people like Bill Gates, speak to people like Nelson Mandela, speak to people like Gandhi, and they will tell you that they saw an opportunity to change the way in which life stood for them and for mankind, and they put their neck out there, and they did bring about some of the Thank you. Uh, what advice would you give to the elders? I think I'd be looking to what the elders to advise me, to be honest, because they, <laughs> one would like to think are full of wisdom and can share that with people like myself and others.